Hello and welcome to Sway Health, where we bring you the latest insights and interesting stories from the brightest minds in healthcare marketing. I am joined today, I'm very excited to be joined today by two folks who are gonna to talk to us about some of this interesting work they're doing on depositioning. And joining me on the program today is Emily Keough, who is the Director of Marketing and Partnerships at Remedy. Welcome to the program, Emily. Thank you, very glad to be here. And also joining me is Courtney Williams from Alloy. Courtney, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. So I gotta ask right off the bat, what is depositioning? Can you describe that for our audience, please? Yes, absolutely. So depositioning is basically an approach where you're attempting to gain a competitive edge over your competitors. Okay. So it's a really important piece of brand positioning. And if you do it well, it can be really subtle, but also very powerful. And so it's an important approach today in healthcare marketing because there's so much competition in this space. You have new startups continuing to enter the market every day. You have big tech continuing to enter healthcare and everyone wants their piece of the pie. So you really have to get creative in today's marketing world to stand out from your, your competition. And Emily, from your perspective, what, what is the positioning meant for, for Mimini? For us, it's, it's really about um, putting an emphasis on humanizing our, our messaging. Um, we're really fortunate, it, it starts with our founder. We're really fortunate to have a great thought leader in our founder, Dr. Lucy Eide. She's got such an interesting background. Um, she's done data science for government. She's had her clinical training. She's done venture capital. So she takes all of those experiences into our product. Um, and when she talks about it, you know, not even talking about remedy, she's just expounding upon the frustrations that led her to, to start Remedy, um, it really resonates with people that also happen to be our target audience of healthcare providers. So, so when an organization takes on this uh, competitive depositioning, as you called it, how subtle or how blatant is it? Because like, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like it could be very blatant. Is that sort of the wrong approach for this? Or can you tell me some of the steps that are involved in this? That's a little bit part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. And it kind of depends on the company, their value proposition, you know, the storytelling that they have to do. But to do depositioning really well, you have to start with the foundation of messaging. And so with the approach working with the Remedy team, we really wanted to humanize their messaging. We wanted to get personal with their messaging. They have a very unique stance in the marketplace that really sets them apart. And so we wanted to play off that tone, the style, really the storytelling aspect of the company and who they are. And so that's what really led us to be able to do the depositioning for Remedy very successfully and to really humanize the brand. It sounds like you're really keying in off some what makes your brand unique and it's really this, through this depositioning process that really comes more forward. Is that mm -hmm. kind of a, a way to think about it? Yes, absolutely. It's basically anything that you can explain in a way that's going to resonate with people. So we're taking a look at everything that we're producing. So our thought leadership content, our digital ads, what we're putting out in social media, and we're really making enhancements. Sometimes they can be small tweaks, you know, a word choice or change here or there. Other times it's how we're explaining an entire value proposition for something like remote patient monitoring. But really our goal is to elicit some sort of emotional response or trigger from the target audiences. And then we obviously have to get that buy-in throughout the organization to make that you know, be powerful. So sometimes we're going really bold, really deep. Other times it's a little bit more subtle and indirect, just like personalized word tweaks or preferences that can still have a really large impact. Now, Emily, before I ask you my next question, can you maybe tell our audience a little bit about Remedy so that they have the context <laughs> for what I'm about to ask you? So Remedy is a digital health company that's focused on helping healthcare providers start and sustain remote patient monitoring and chronic disease uh, management programs. All right. So, so this, is, this is good context because what I was going to ask Emily is, can you give us a before and after picture of what the messaging was like for you before you went through this process and now what it is after you've gone through this competitive deep positioning? Sure. And, and I think there's kind of two components to it. One ties back towards um, one of the sessions yesterday about making your messaging in plain language, mm. um, making sure you have those chunky pieces and bullet points and things like that and being clear about what it is you do. But at the same time, not necessarily leading with Remedy does this ah. in, in every, um, everything that you post on social media, everything that your thought leaders post on social media. Um, so really 
and, and another change that we've really hit on is, again, leading on our thought leaders and not necessarily what the brand's posting, but what, um, what they're posting and how they're posting it. it. They might not even mention Remedy, but those get more engagement. They ultimately lead to more networking um, and ultimately lead back to, to Remedy and what we do. So in terms of uh, how it's been received, how have your stakeholders, internal stakeholders, first of all, how have they received this new approach to your brand, uh, the slimming it down, if you will, in terms of the language and, and the depositioning? How's that been going inside the company? It's been going well. Um, we have the data to, to show that it's working. Um, on one hand, uh, as I, I keep going back to our thought leaders, but Dr. Ide's been posting a lot um, lately on LinkedIn, and a lot of that comes from Alloy pointing out to us, hey, this is pretty timely to comment on, and she has great comments. Um, her latest post on Walmart um, shutting its primary care business has, last I checked, like over 300 engagements and a bunch of reposts and comments. Um, and beyond that, you know, year over year, I think our media relations, our media placements has increased like 15 percent. Wow. And leads from digital ads have gone up as well, I think 20 percent. So um, really focusing on making it less about us and more about our customers, I think, has really helped. Those are great results, and thank you for sharing those. Uh, what's the reaction been from people outside the company? Uh, how have your clients, your prospects, and just the, your target market received some of this subtle shift in your brand positioning? I think it. I think it just lends credibility. Mm. Um, so when we're when we're talking to them, we, you know, they already know that they're talking to somebody that is credible, that's been in this business for a long time. We're not like those startups that have were built in a garage during COVID or have already shut down. Um, we've we've been here for a while, and I think when we talk about our story a little bit more, um, the more people we talk to know that. Right. So you saw that you, you want to be the trusted voice, and now you're finding your voice out there. It sounds like through this process, and your right. your, your subject matter experts are really showcasing that through all the posts they do and the timeliness of it. That's really fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. So, so for a question for both of you, then, if, if there's someone listening and watching this who wants to kind of achieve some of these results, wants to maybe take take on this kind of a project of competitive depositioning, what would you recommend? Uh, in terms of how they could get started? Yeah, it's a great question because we know for brands, most messaging can be very personal, especially if you go to the, the C-suite or the board or other stakeholders and say, we need to shift some of our brand messaging. That can be a little bit of a sensitive subject. So some good ways to start. Again, it doesn't always have to be these major overhauls in our positioning. It can be some of those more smaller word choices or tweaks that will have a big impact. But um, three really key ways is the first being to really put yourself in your audience's shoes. And so by that we mean go outside of your typical market research. So persona profiles, stakeholder interviews, focus groups, those things are great, but they really only give you so much intel. And so we like to put ourselves directly in the customer's shoes, go shadow them for a day, two days, a week, see how they're using the software, watch them interacting with the patient and see you know, the frustrations or challenges that they're facing and speak to that in your content. Mm. Once you have that data, it's easier to take to the stakeholders and say, hey, this is what we saw from this customer visit. Here's what we need to do to better address some of these challenges or these problems. Um, and that's a big one because I think if you look at any healthcare vendor websites today, you'll see there's a lot of focus on outcomes. Mm. Everyone improves patient care. Everyone <laughs> drives efficiency, right? What's the problem or the challenge if we're not driving efficiency or if we're not improving patient care? Mm -hmm. Speak to that. That's what's really gonna set you apart and make you different. Um, the second one is you just really wanna showcase that authenticity and be compassionate. And so when we write messaging, We'll kind of get our thoughts on paper, sit with it for a second, read it out loud. If it's not triggering some sort of emotional response from us, it's probably not gonna be well received from our end user as well. That's when we'll go back and, and make those shifts and tweaks that we need to make. Um, and then the third step would just be to test your messaging. So you don't have to you know, just go with something right after it's been produced. Put out different iterations of things, test how it performs, see what has the best reach and engagement, and that data will give you a lot of insight too to take back about what's most important to bring out into the market and how certain things are performing. So that would be where I would start. 
So your, same question to you, Emily. So how can someone get started? What would you recommend in terms of their first steps on this competitive depositioning process? I think exactly what Courtney said. I mean, at the end of the day, your clients are people and your employees are people. Where can you find the stories within your employees that are going to resonate with your clients as people? Um, just to put it as simply as you can. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, both of you shared some great information. You shared a lot of great information with me. I've certainly learned a lot about this process. Uh, Emily, you first. Where can people go to learn more about your organization? They can go to Remedy.com. That's R-I-M-I-D-I.com or our social channels, um, Twitter, X, <laughs> <laughs> join, join the Remedy, and uh, LinkedIn. Amazing, amazing. And Courtney, where can people go to learn more about Alloy? Yes, absolutely. You can find us on our website, alloycrew.com, also on X at Alloy Crew, or on LinkedIn as Alloy. Amazing. Thank you to both of you for being on our program today. Really appreciate everything you've said to us. Thank you so much, Colin. Yeah. Thanks for having us. This has been Colin Hung for Sway Health. If you enjoyed this interview as much as I did, please like and subscribe. Also, head on over to Sway Health, that's Sway with two A's, dot health, where you can find more great content like this. Thanks for being here, and I'll catch you on the next episode.